11 minutes to the hour. This is Paris Live PM. And to end the show today, we're going to bring you the story of Winneretta Singer, an heiress to the Singer sewing machine fortune, a patron of the arts in Paris and a lover of many women. She was American-born, a daughter of Isaac Singer, the inventor of the first mass-produced sewing machine. Before her death in 1943, Winneretta Singer made a name for herself, marrying a prince, but moreover, through the five decades, she spent welcoming musicians and other artists to her Paris salon. My guest today is Winneretta Singer biographer Sylvia Cahan, a pianist and musicologist in New York. Thanks for being on the program today. Thank you, Amanda. Now, your book is Music's Modern Muse, A Life of Winneretta Singer, Princesse de Polignac. It's uh, recently been translated into French. You spent 25 years researching and documenting her life, her passions, her achievements. It's an extraordinary life, no doubt. But was there a particular moment when you decided to dedicate so much of your time to telling her story? It was rather a miraculous moment. Uh, it was during the time that I was doing my doctoral studies and I was looking for a subject for my dissertation. For my degree, which is a performer's degree, the DMA, I also needed to do a final recital. And I thought, I will look for music that I've always wanted to play. So I started with Ravel's Pavan pour une enfant défunte. I opened the score and it said dedicated to the Princess de Polignac. I thought, oh, who's that? Played the piece, closed the music. The next piece on the piano under it was the Stravinsky Piano Sonata, and it said, dedicated to the princess Edmond de Polignac. And I thought, this is a coincidence. And then the next week, I had a rehearsal with a soprano who said, let's rehearse a song by Faure. I opened the score. It said, dedicated to the princess Edmond de Polignac. I thought, twice is a coincidence, three times is a sign. And that's how I decided to begin those studies. And it was first my dissertation, I then became friends with the Polignac heirs, who invited me to spend summers at their chateau. And thanks to that, I was able to access more material with which I could write a book. Wow, that sounds like a fascinating journey. Um, Winneretta Singer used her fortune uh, to fund a wide range of causes. Most notably was her salon in Paris, where she lived for most of her life and where her protégés included uh, the likes of Debussy and, as you say, Ravel, uh, one of her admirers, I suppose. Tell us about this uh, quite famous uh, salon and what went on there. Winneretta had sort of a sixth sense for, first of all, figuring out what was excellent and what was run of the mill, and she was always ahead of the curve. So she could kind of foresee and hear in advance um, uh, trends, musical trends, before they began. She went to Germany and heard a performance of a Richard Strauss opera, and she said, you know, I have the feeling that the days of big orchestras are over, the days of post-romanticism and Wagner. And she wanted to use her money to commission a series of, of pieces for small ensemble that could be performed in her home. And she asked Stravinsky, Manuel de Falla, Eric Satie to compose pieces for her. And those pieces had their first performances in her salon. Was she a musician herself? I mean, where did she get this uh, appreciation for the arts? Her parents decided that she should have the kind of trainings that young women in society should have. She learned to play the piano. She studied painting with some rather renowned painters of, of the period. But music uh, was for her a psychological refuse, refuge. She, uh, Her mother, after the death of Mr. Singer... Her mother, Isabelle Sager, married a so-called duke who used the singer sewing machine money to buy his title of duke. But he was a very talented violinist. And with the singer fortune, he amassed a collection of rare musical instruments, Stradivarius, um, Amadi instruments. Uh, and with these instruments, um, he invited the greatest chamber musicians in Paris to come and perform in that home salon, and that is how Winneretta heard the great works of chamber music when she was a young woman. 
Um, it was also the period where there were great organ recitals, the complete works of Bach being given at the Trocadero, and she fell in love with Bach's music. So she actually had a rather extraordinary formation as, a, as an amateur musician when she was a young woman. Now, uh, like many other wealthy uh, Americans, uh, Winnerette Singer married a, a European aristocrat. Uh, she was 22 when she married her first prince. Did she do this in order to gain a title? Uh, and tell us about this marriage and what went wrong. <sighs> um, there, it has been said in the family mythology that the, the duke, the stepfather, tried to rape her. I don't know if this is true or not, but when she turned 21, she, uh, behind her parents' back, she went and put her fortune in her own name, and she bought her own home um, on Avenue Henri Martin. But she could not circulate in society as a young unmarried woman. So she basically married the first prince that came along. His name was the Prince de saint Montbéliard. And there is another family legend that on the night of their honeymoon, uh, the groom entered the bridal chamber, and there she was on top of a large closet, brandishing an umbrella, and she said, if you touch me, I'll kill you. Uh, this lasted, uh, this marriage lasted four unhappy years, after which the marriage was annulled by the Vatican. But then, Comte Robert de Montesquieu, who was the model for Proust's Baron de Chalus, uh, introduced Winneretta to his friend, the homosexual composer Edmond de Polignac. Uh, Edmond de Polignac was, in fact, a composer of great talent, and he believed himself to have invented what we now call the octatonic scale, or the diminished scale, as we say in jazz. And uh, Winneretta uh, truly loved him. They, they fell in love. It was not a sexual marriage, he being gay, she being a lesbian, but they loved each other as deeply as two people can. And together, the salon acted as the sort of consecration of their devotion to each other. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, she was a lesbian. Winneretta Singer openly enjoyed some very high-profile relationships with women. How did uh, society view her and her homosexuality, uh, you know, particularly given, given the time that she lived uh, and also the fact that she was motivated to do good and to contribute to society? So how was she seen? It was an open secret that she was a lesbian, but when you had a title... Uh, it was a societal convention to not gossip openly. So she was able to hide behind her title. Moreover, she adhered to all of society's conventions. She did not seek to attract scandal, and it did not come to find her. And because she was the Princesse de Polignac, and because she uh, had this very famous salon of music, and because she gave um, a lot of money to worthwhile causes, including the Salvation Army, uh, she helped build many homeless shelters, she gave millions of francs to build these shelters, with Le Corbusier as the architect, and because of her good works and her renown, and because society simply didn't want to break its own conventions, she was able to uh, carry on her personal life behind the scenes. Now, we've got, uh, Sylvia, just one minute left. Uh, tell us briefly, can we measure her influence on 20th century music and literature? Tell us how has her, her legacy lived on? I would say about two dozen of the works that she commissioned, such as uh, two concertos by Poulenc, a number of songs by Faure, Stravinsky's Renard, all of these works are still in the active repertoire. And so the idea of private subvention of music caught on in part because of her, and the idea of smaller pieces of music within the home uh, caught on as well because of her. And she was also at the forefront of what we now call musical uh, neoclassicism. A fascinating uh, woman and uh, I'm sure a, a fascinating read. I should probably also mention that Winneretta Singer was um, uh, one of 24 children, uh, an interesting <laughs> yes. point. Uh, we've run out of time, though. Thank you so much, Sylvia Cahan, for joining us on Paris Live PM today. Thank you, Amanda.